If you're on your phone, tablet, or computer, which of course you are, let's talk about making some nickel nitrate, and the most common form of it has six waters in it. It was first discovered in 1751 by the Swedish chemist Axel Kronstad. It is an inorganic compound, no carbon here. Nickel nitrate anhydrous was first produced in 1961 by Cyril Addison. Now you can take the nickel nitrate hexahydrate and heat it until you drive off the waters and you'll have the anhydrous form. But this gentleman right here, Cyril Addison, did it from scratch, meaning he produced nickel nitrate anhydrous without needing to produce the hexahydrate form first. You probably figured out by now nickel nitrate is hygroscopic and the hexahydrate is the most common form. The nickel in nickel nitrate hexahydrate is nickel 2 nitrate. And here's just a very small uh, and simple showing of how the H2Os, which are here, here, and here, are bonded to the nickel with the NO3s here. And this only has four, so this would be tetrahydrate. In this case, and in all the hydrates of nickel nitrate, the anions are not bonded to the nickel. So if you heat it enough, eventually things are gonna fly off of it. When heated, nickel nitrate decomposes. Two nickel nitrates plus the heat will yield two nickel oxides plus four nitrogen dioxides plus O2. And just as a side note, Nickel oxide is used as ceramics and as a catalyst mostly in petroleum refining. As are most nitrates, it is a strong oxidizer. It can also be dissolved in solution and used for nickel plating. In this experiment, we'll be starting with nickel metal. I did make some nickel powder by dissolving some U.S. nickels, but there's not enough quantity there to do this experiment, at least in the um, yields I want. So we'll be using rods of nickel metal. I'm going to be shooting for yield of around 100 grams here. So to do that in our materials, I'll need nickel metal 33 grams, 70% nitric acid 140 milliliters, and the 30% hydrogen peroxide I'll be doing in amounts of 10 to 12 milliliters PRN. Covering the reactions real quick, I have two equations right here that are for different concentrations of nitric acid. The one, first one is for 30%, second one for 70% are concentrated. And you can see the amounts vary a little bit as far as how much nickel and how much nitric acid is needed. We get nickel nitrate here, we get our waters here, and at the very end is the only real difference, and that is the fact that this forms nitric oxide and this forms nitrogen dioxide. We'll be using the 70%, so we need to watch out for the nitrogen dioxide. This last equation here is about adding the hydrogen peroxide. So when you add the hydrogen peroxide, you get water and oxygen out of it, and it's the oxygen that really works to break down the passivity layer that can form a nickel metal when it's in nitric acid, even at 70%. If you put nickel metal in fuming nitric acid, it forms at such an extent that it will not dissolve, much like copper does the same thing. But those oxygens then combine with the nickel metal and two hydrogen ions to form nickel in its plus two state, plus some water, but in this state, it can then combine with the NO3s to form our nickel nitrate. This very last equation here is an overall reaction equation of everything above using 70% nitric acid and it is simplified. Nickel plus two nitric acids plus the hydrogen peroxide will give us our nickel nitrate plus water. In our methods we're going to start with a beaker here with 70% nitric acid with the nickel metal in there. Now adding hydrogen peroxide will be done as needed just to get the nickel dissolved. As we go I'll be adding either more nitric acid or hydrogen peroxide to get all of the nickel dissolved. That's the main idea. Once that's done, I'm gonna heat it for a while to get rid of some of the water because we're using 30% hydrogen peroxide, so 70% of that is water. We're using 70% nitric acid, so 30% of that is water, plus we're producing water in the actual reaction itself. Once as much water is gonna evaporate as is necessary, we're then gonna cool it, which of course will bring out the nickel nitrate hexahydrate into its crystallized form, and then we need to scrape it out, filter it, wash it. I'll be washing it with some very cold distilled water, which you can do because as long as it's not that much, this will get rid of most of the excess nitric acid. And then I'll be washing it with 95% ethanol because that will wash out the water and help it dry quicker. We then need to dry it good. We'll weigh it, which I didn't write down, but we'll do that. See how close to 100 grams we get there. And then finally, I'm gonna test it one or two ways just to prove that we have nickel nitrate, which we will have, of course, but testing it is always fun. That's a wrap. Let's go make our nickel nitrate hexahydrate. This took a little bit of doing, honestly, but here is 33 grams of pure nickel metal pre-weighed. 140 milliliters of 70% nitric acid pre-measured. First thing, of course, is pour our nitric acid into this beaker here. And then I'm going to start with the smallest piece of nickel here just to get it going. I have a very, very small magnetic stir, which is obviously going to combine with it. I really don't know how this is going to work, but... I tried nickel by itself and it just kind of flops around. So let's turn it on and see what happens here. 
yeah, that's interesting. But it's going to keep it moving. And uh, I'll probably turn it off from time to time if it gets too wild in there. And the last thing is turn on the temperature to maybe around 25 degrees Celsius to start. Now let's make it 30. I turned off the magnetic stir because it eventually got locked and wasn't spinning at all. But I'm going to now add the very last piece of nickel here. So this is all 33 grams of nickel. It's just been about 10 minutes since I added that last piece of nickel, but it's been an hour overall. And since this is going rather slow, I am going to add some 30% hydrogen peroxide to this, 12 milliliters and no more. You can see how quickly that green color went away with the extra oxidation of this hydrogen peroxide. Okay. All right, we'll continue on. You can clearly see the green color returned, which of course would have happened because nickel nitrate is in fact uh, a greenish color, the crystals are. So I'm going to keep heating this. The process is slow, but um, I'll be back when most of this is done. I just added another 12 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide to give this another kick here. I've done that about three times so far over the last four hours. You can see the rods of nickel are getting much, much smaller. In addition, the solution is actually a lot darker than it looks here because it's backlit, but we're almost done. It's been eight hours since I first started this and poured the nitric acid over those three nickel rods. And during that time, I've added 12 milliliters of 30% hydrogen peroxide five times. And I've also added an additional 30 milliliters of the 70% nitric acid because the solution was getting pretty low a couple times and not all of the nickel was dissolved. Right now it's being heated at 60 degrees Celsius, which is where I've had it. What you see coming off the top is water vapor mostly. So I'm going to take it from the 175 it's at down to about maybe 140, 150 milliliters total. That'll get rid of quite, of the water, quite a bit of the water and make the crystallizing much easier. It's around the 140 milliliter mark right now. Of course, that's just an estimation. What I'm going to do is turn this off now, including the heat and the magnetic stirrer. As it evaporates some more, it's going to, of course, drop a little bit. But what I think I'm going to do now is pour this into a cold Pyrex dish because I think there's crystals already forming on the top, so it's pretty saturated. Here it goes. And here's our nickel nitrate hexahydrate, finally. That solution was pretty saturated. Uh, I don't see any liquid anywhere. It looks like it dried up really well. So I'm going to next break this up. Running this metal spoon across this is doing basically nothing. It is extremely hard, so I'm gonna have to find another way. Okay, that was overkill, but maybe this will work. Yeah, oh, that's tough. So I obviously broke these into some pretty small pieces here, but I'm going to continue to do that and break it into even smaller pieces. And then we will wash them, dry them, and weigh them. This is much better for washing, much, much smaller pieces. Are we transferring this now, of course, over to this funnel? Okay, done. I spilled a little bit back there, but I'll get that. As I mentioned, the first thing I'm going to wash this nickel nitrate with is some very cold distilled water. There's still ice in here, but you want that so you don't, uh, of course, dissolve much of the crystals here. Just a little bit. Done. There wasn't much water, of course, but it has stopped dripping. Maybe 10 drops there. This is 95% ethanol, which it is not very soluble in at all. Done. If you heat nickel nitrate crystals too much, they'll dissolve in their own water. So I'm going to spread these out here because they're going to have to air dry. I got everything out of the filter paper, spread it out a little better, and I have this fan on the side. You can see right here and hear it. Just uh, have to let them dry completely and then we'll weigh them. I swapped out the paper toweling because it was getting pretty damp. But these have been here now for an hour and they look very dry as far as a hexahydrate is going to get dry. So I'm going to turn the fan off here and we'll weigh them. I got all the crystals on this single piece of paper here just to make it easier. So it's just a matter of getting it up. There we go. And of course this is teared to zero even though it's got the 
funnel in there that helps catch everything. Okay, 93.06 grams. Not too bad considering the transferring and the washings. I was shooting for 100 grams. That's what my original weights and measurements were for. So 93% yield, I'm very happy with. I think, of course, if I did less of that, I might come close to 100% yield, which I've seen people do. The other thing I want to make mention is before I wash these crystals right here, they actually had a pretty decent odor of nitric acid. And after washing, there's absolutely no odor whatsoever. So I'd rather have purity, of course, than quantity. Now on to some testing. You can see the equation right here. I'm going to dissolve this nickel nitrate right there. And this is also sodium hydroxide. You can see when the nickel ions combine with the hydroxide ions, you get nickel hydroxide, which is a green precipitate. Just adding a little water to both of them. Now that they're both dissolved, I'll show you the reaction here real quick. There's your nickel hydroxide precipitate. I have a very small amount here of the nickel nitrate hexahydrate, and I'm going to heat it. And you'll notice that once the water is driven off, it turns to a different color, like a lighter green. So you can see the color change. I wipe most of it off. There's a small amount left there, and I just want to show you if you continue to heat it, you'll eventually get a black substance, which is just nickel oxide. You can see that black spot in the middle there, which is the nickel oxide and a little bit of the anhydrous surrounding it. Okay, done with the testing.